this week we are going to be making some brownies. Everybody needs a sweet treat. And it's great that we can add different toppings to it if we want, so let's make some brownies. So the first thing our recipe tells us to do is um, to preheat our oven. It is extremely important to preheat the oven because if you don't turn on the oven, they're not gonna bake. So um, we are going to be heating it to 350 degrees depending on how your oven works. So make sure you ask your parents how to properly make sure your oven is on. Um, so for mine, I'm gonna hit bake, 350, and most of them you do have like a start button. It's like a little safety feature so that way kids aren't just poking buttons. And we're gonna hit start. So my oven will start counting up from 100 and it will beep when it actually turns 350 degrees. So right now, you should be preheating your oven. So if you are like me, a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you just pick up a box mix of brownies. These are totally fine to make. And if this is what you have at home right now and you don't have the other ingredients, make these, they're really tasty. Um, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. My favorite is definitely the dark chocolate ones. But today you are going to need sugar, flour, a stick of butter, um, two eggs, some baking powder, cocoa, um, some salt, vanilla, a rubber scraper, measuring spoons, if you have a flat metal spatula or a knife, so that way we can make sure everything is leveled up um, properly, some measuring cups, a small um, pot, I um, some cooking spray, and an 8x8 baking pan. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to measure one cup of sugar into our mixing bowl. Again, I'm not using an actual mixing bowl here. I'm using it because it's the largest one that I have that's clear, so you can all see what's inside. So, one cup of sugar. Get in here. Again, we want to make sure it's nice and leveled, so I'm going to level it back into my container. And this is definitely the wrong size for this. <laughs> We're making it work. Okay, I don't want sugar all over my kitchen. Okay, I just want to make sure we're going to start from the front and making sure this is leveled. Again, ideally you would want to have a measuring cup that is not the same size as your container or be doing it over top of a, but now I have a nice leveled one cup of sugar. Okay, put that in there use much sugar so that's why I have a really small container of it. Okay we also want two eggs. So when we are cracking our eggs remember we want to be cracking them into a smaller bowl so that way in case any shells get into it they're going in here and not into our actual items. So when we're cracking again our goal is to get it cracked one side to the other not on the back. So a medium pressure not like lightly tapping not smashing it where it's going to go everywhere. Okay, so we have a crack on that side, no crack on the back, and I am going to open it up. I have my trash can down below here again, so that's where I'm throwing my eggshells. Do not put them on the countertop, okay? Oh, my oven is done. So we're gonna crack the other egg. So we have a crack there, nothing on the back. Put that in there. I am going to wash my hands. So my hands are washed. So I am going to pour my eggs into on top of my sugar. Okay, put the bowl into my sink. And we are also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm just using um, the imitation vanilla. Uh, so one teaspoon. So remember that's the little more of the two, so teaspoons and tablespoons, so we are using a teaspoon. Okay, so one teaspoon, and pour that in there. Okay, and I'm gonna mix this all together with my rubber scraper, so one of these, and we're gonna mix this all together. Now, we are going to be melting a half of a cup of butter on the stove, and pouring this in here on top of all of this. Now, I should never see anybody trying to 
take like a stick of butter and squishing it into this is a half a cup, okay? Why? Because on the side of every single stick of butter, a half a, half a cup is always one stick of butter, okay? On the side of every single stick, like if I, it was calling for three teaspoons, three tablespoons, butter is always usually measured in tablespoons. Um, I can see one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three. It even goes as far to say if like I want a third of a cup, I would go from the edge of this line and it's showing me I would go the entire way up here and then slice it right there, okay? So we are going to be melting a whole entire half a stick of butter, okay? So move this off to the side, put my pot. Up. So we want to make sure the wrapper is all off. Sometimes it likes to stick on there. A lot of times when you are using a box mix of brownies, it calls for oil. Okay, so this recipe, our fat, instead of using the oil, we are going to be using butter. Okay, so let's go to the stove and melt this. So my butter is currently melting. I am going to keep it at a medium high temperature. You don't want to keep it at high because sometimes the butter does burn. Um, so we're just going to keep stirring it all around um, until it fully melts. And then we're going to take it back over and pour it into our sugar, egg, and vanilla mixture that we have already started in our mixing bowl. So we have our half a cup of melted butter and I see the sun is coming back in. It's going to be a little harder to see. Um, so I'm going to pour this in here. Put this into my sink. And I give this a good stir so everything is mixed together. So now you should have sugar, eggs, vanilla, and butter. And that's looking good. Now, we are going to be adding a third of a cup of cocoa. Okay, so you want the unsweetened cocoa. Um, so let's move this off to the side. So a third of it, I'm going to see if I can get this in here without making a big mess. I really need little smaller measuring cups that are not as wide. So we wanna make sure we are not getting everything all over the place. So we have a nice one third cup of cocoa. I'm gonna pour that in there. Okay. We also need a half a cup of flour. Now, remember when you are measuring flour, you wanna spoon the flour into the measuring cup, okay? So I'm going to spoon this in here. So we're going to get it so we're teeping and then we will level it off. Okay, so that looks good. And now I'm going to level it off with the back of the knife. So making sure we have nice and leveled measurements. Baking is a science. Okay, you have to be exact. It's not like when you're cooking something, you're like, oh, it needs a little more spice or it needs a little more salt or pepper, anything like that. Baking, you have to be exact. Okay, so make sure you are accurately measuring. So we also need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so salt, it does have usually two different openings. So the one I would be able to pour, the other side, it's like if I'm sprinkling it on top of maybe um, a baked potato. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. So we want a fourth of a teaspoon of, let's see, rinse this off. It still had some vanilla in there. Fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Baking powder. 
okay? So normally when you are baking, you either have baking powder or baking soda um, in your recipe. So this one is using baking powder. So I'm gonna use the back of the knife in order to make sure everything is nice and leveled off. And putting that in there as well. Okay, I'm done with my measuring spoons. Now we're just gonna mix everything all together with our rubber scraper, okay? So we wanna make sure everything is thoroughly mixed, okay, it doesn't have any big clumps. Make sure you scrape the sides, okay? So this is our brownie batter. We are going to be baking this in an eight by eight pan, okay? Um, so it is not like the big family size that like if you buy, um, I think my brownie mix that I had earlier, that was a family size portion. So that would normally go into like a 13 by nine pan. Um, so this is just an eight by eight pan. You can always add any different types of toppings that you want to it. I'm actually gonna sprinkle some Girl Scout Thin Mint cookies on top of mine today. I'm a huge fan of chocolate and mint um, together, and I saw this the other day posted, um, and I was like, ooh, I kinda wanna try this out. So I'm going to pour, like crumble up some Thin Mint cookies and sprinkle them all on the top. Now, my brownie mix is good. You can see it is kind of like, just kinda, it doesn't have any clumps or anything like that in it. And we are going to be using an eight by eight pan. We're also going to make sure that we spray it with cooking spray again, um, so that way it does not stick all on the sides. Okay, so making sure we're spraying the sides and also a thin layer on the bottom. And we are going to pour our brownie mix into the pan. So, the advantage of using a rubber scraper here is you can scrape all the sides. So I should not see um, any brownie mix, like huge big clumps of it, all on the sides of your bowl. Now, I know we are all tempted sometimes to lick the rubber scraper. However, as you all know, from, this does have real eggs in it, which can be a carrier for salmonella. Okay, so we should not be licking just like eating it right off of the rubber scraper, okay? So I'm going to add some cookie crumbles to the top of this, and then we're going to put it into the oven to bake. So you can see I kind of sprinkled some Girl Scout Thin Mint cookies all in the batter, and the recipe tells us that we are going to be putting it in here for 25 to 30 minutes. Now, when you are putting it in here, typically I would keep it at the lower range, so the 25 minutes, and then you can always add time. Like if you would put a knife in just to see if it comes out and it still has batter on it, it's not done. Okay, so if you pull it out and there's nothing on your knife, they're done, okay? So when we open up the oven, you wanna be putting it right into the middle rack, okay? So there's a burner on the top, there's a burner on the bottom. So if we put it right in the middle, it's evenly going to cook. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide it right in here. The pan's not hot, that's why I didn't use oven mitts yet. Okay, so we're gonna close this up and I'm going to set my kitchen timer for 25 minutes and then we'll come back and be able to eat some brownies. So the brownies are almost done. We are down to five seconds. So as some of my kids used to say, it's the final countdown. And beeping, that means we're done. So I'm gonna turn off my oven, turning off my timer. I am going to need an oven mitt in order to make sure that my hands are uh, safe when I'm taking it over to my cooling rack. I'm also gonna need a knife in order to check if these are actually done. So before I take these out of the oven, I'm just gonna take a knife and just kind of poke it in here, okay? And when I poke, bring it out, you can see there's nothing on my knife, which means these brownies are done and ready to come out, okay? So I'm gonna take these out, close up my oven, and we are going to be cooling them on the cooling rack. I would suggest probably about 10 minutes um, in order for them to cool, firm back up, so that way they are able to um, be cut, okay? so.